Hello everyone and welcome back to For the Minions episode 32, the weekly show where we talk about some what can hopefully be the spiritual successors to Paragon. I am your host, the one and only Mangoose. Joining me as always is my sister from another, Mr. Mandy Mal. Mandy, how you doing? I'm doing much better. I was kind of suffering there for a while. I had a headache for like two days in a row, but I'm doing so much better now and I'm super excited <laughs> because... We have a really cool guest host with us, Mr. Creed, and you are a game tester for Core, is that correct? Yeah, I'm a part of the quality <laughs> control team, so I game test, I help troubleshoot with the community, all that stuff. If you guys have problems, like when we did our map test launch, I was running around trying to help everybody get that up and going, so all right, that fun stuff. Well, we're definitely excited to have you on the show. Why don't you tell us how you got started with Paragon, your favorite hero, all that good stuff. Well, I uh, started playing on like PS4 way back in the day. Like, I don't, it wasn't too far back. I never really played Legacy, mm -hmm. but then summer hit, I got like addicted. I started playing that religiously. I think I put like over 70 days in the game and then I think I... Ended up like top 200 with like 2,000 plus Evo. Just played played way too much for my own good. It was like <laughs> terrible. Uh, my favorite character was probably Morgesh on release. Like she was just so fun to play. And then other than that, probably Rev since I was a PS4 player at the time, so it was like easier to use. Mm -hmm. And I he's my favorite because I I got my first pentakill with him, and I was like super hyped up with that. <laughs> and it's only it's the only clip I have saved with Paragon, so I, I watch that sometimes. With yeah. Awesome. Cry a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Send it over to me. I'll feature it on the show. Love, love a good, it. love a good pentakill. I hated more okay. Gesh though. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she was she was terrible. Damn she her. was fun to play. I'm, I'm really <laughs> <laughs> so you you ended up in the top two hundred. That was uh, that's 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 quite an accomplishment. I mean, there wasn't a whole lot of people playing at the time, but still, there was right. a couple. You know, there was there was a lot. I mean, that is an accomplishment. That's pretty cool. Right. It was a grind. It was a lot of frustration. I think I broke my hand once because I was so mad at the game. I just <laughs> smashed my desk. That seems it, was, right. it was even on my Smurf account, too. It wasn't even on my main. So I was like, wow. <laughs> Put me out for like two weeks. I was I was more upset about that. Well, how, I mean, if we, if we weren't passionate about the game, we wouldn't be still talking about it right now, you know? <laughs> exactly, yes. Yeah. true. So let's, uh, let's move right along. Let's get to news and updates, starting with Meta Buff and Core. And uh, Creed, I, I really didn't have anything from Opolis, so it's, it's on you, man. They're, they're, they're throwing you out there. You need to bring us bring us some good news, brother. Right on. I mean, the only good news is that we're just still working. We're just trying to push away at the thing. But everyone's kind of like down and discouraged, but we have to remember that uh, we have three times heroes that we have to work on and stuff. So it's obviously going to take a lot longer than other like games that are working on the project yeah yeah that's like all you got that's all just we're just keep plucking away until we can come out with something big for you guys so you get to you get to get in there in the client and mess around and everything and play around uh not at the moment no but that should be coming out hopefully pretty soon okay but but during the the, the map testing though you were yes i was Making sure that was all working so nobody was falling through the map or anything like that. <laughs> like Mandy and I. <laughs> yes. Mandy and I were the first two people to fall through the map in the, <laughs> the grayscale map testing. I was very proud of that. Yeah, it was it was cool. It's a claim to fame, man. <laughs> so how hard is it once somebody identifies like a bug in the uh in the gap game or like a gap in the in the terrain or anything like that? How how hard is that to identify and fix? Um, it's just a lot of, like, trial and error, and, uh, our level design team is super talented, so, like, I don't know if you guys noticed this, but, like, the turnaround time was super good, like, yes, it was having problems, and, like, next day, next few hours, it's, like, fixed. It's, it was really awesome working with the team, like, they're super talented. Yeah, when, even when, um, uh, when I did the, the, the full scale map testing, um, you know, then they released it about a week later for everybody to test. But, you know, they, they let me kind of take a spin on for the minions before anybody else. Like the time, like that little spin that I did between then and when they released it to everyone, there was several changes mm -hmm. to the map, like already. And then 
within a day of people map testing, there was, you know, changes to the Lord Prime pit and everything too. Mm-hmm. So yeah, the flash to bang with, with meta buff seems to be on point. So that's uh that's good to see. Yeah, it's uh it's just crazy to me too. I was just like, wow. It's like <laughs> good. It's like I was crazy. It's just like, how do you do that so fast? <laughs> yeah, right. Um, can I ask, how did you get started? Um, like, how were you able to become a game tester? Oh, yeah, did good you reach question. out to them? Did they reach out to you? How did how did that go about happening? Um, I just love breaking games. Like, I've been breaking games since, like, Call of Duty. Like, I broke, nice. like, I don't know, I was, like, kind of like that kid that, I like to be on the leaderboards, right? So, I'd always play, like, zombies or something. I'd find glitches, and I would just, like, do that. I'd break the game and then try and climb to the top. So then... Kind of take like the same principles of breaking Call of Duty. That kind of put it in a core, mm. break it the same way. Anything <laughs> like I just look for anything that I can use to my advantage to help me win. And I'm like, I shouldn't be there. So um, <laughs> just, well, there you go, Mandy. Yeah, You're good at breaking games. Yeah, <laughs> unintentionally. I don't quite mean to, but it happens. <laughs> yeah, it happens a lot. That's pretty cool. I'm sure. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people out there are envious of your position. For sure. Let's uh let's move right along on to uh, Meta Studios and predecessor. Uh, they've been conduct- they conducted another internal test. Like uh, they already did their their test for the heroes to see what kind of bugs were still existent with the heroes, and uh, they did another test for the minion AI and the tower AI. And uh, Smokey said that went well. So the next step is for them to uh, rebuild the item system and then test that out too. Um, I'm glad to hear that the minion AI is better because the minions were pretty damned wonky during that that initial alpha release. I didn't notice any real problems with the towers, but yeah, the minions definitely needed some love. And the item system too didn't quite work right. The wards didn't work and you couldn't activate health or mana potions. So it seems like things are going really well for them. And then not only that, but the uh, new map design, Fringe has been releasing some stuff on his stream. Um, I know Brick did a video on it as well. And it looks like they, they, they have some new assets that they're using in place of the core and the towers. I mean, I think it's just the towers that have been dressed, they've just been dressed up a little bit. But it does look nice and it looks more legacy feeling than when they had the, the sort of monolith towers on the legacy style map. So, uh, I sent you guys the link to that. Did you guys check that out? I did. I seen that on Break's channel as well, too. Yeah. I thought, uh, I thought, I thought it looked really, really awesome. I was super impressed. Um, am I mistaken or did I hear someone say that Fringe actually made the new the new assets that they're using? Mm-hmm. Um, he actually created those from scratch, I believe. I swear I heard that somewhere, but I could be wrong. If you if you didn't hear that, maybe I made it up. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm not I'm not entirely certain. I'm, I know he has the capability to do so. And um, so it very well could be. I'm sure. I'm sure he will let us know in the comments. Yeah. He will. He will confirm or deny if that <laughs> yes, is he will. the case or not. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get back to you guys with that. <laughs> so yeah, um, ho- hopefully they got their uh, that alpha back soon. We can get back in there and duke it out some more. But uh, let's move on now from uh, from Omega Studios and get into Undying with Ethereal. Uh, cool stuff from them. We finally get to see. Uh, the full reveal of Marina, who is the 14th hero that is scheduled for their alpha. That her alpha is only going to have the 14 heroes. She's kind of the final one. We showed her a little bit on the channel before on, on FTM, but uh, we did we couldn't see her face, and um, now we can, and it's it, and it's awesome. She looks really good, uh, just like freaking everything else they do. She looks amazing. Uh, Creed, what do you think about Ethereal? What do you think about Marina? Uh, I think it's a cool idea. I thought Marina, she looked, uh, she looked awesome. I was super like just wowed. I was like, that's there's a lot of detail. Hair looked good. Oh, it looked just great. I was super impressed. I love all their artwork that they do. It looks, mm-hmm. All of it looks amazing. What about you, Mandy? Yeah, they are just phenomenal. They are really their their art department is just knocking it out of the park. And it was really good to see um, something you know a little bit more substantial from them as far as just like yeah we're working we're working and then we can see we can see a product of what they've been working Mm. on so that's really really exciting uh she seemed a little more subdued in the as far as color goes than what we originally saw uh with her um concept art um i was expecting her to be a little bit a little bit more colorful and i know that they had 
Wanted her to have hair that was made of water. I don't know if that's going to be a particle effect in game or if that's just something that's going to be, you know, outside their, their comfort zone or something that would really, seems like that would really mess up a renders. <laughs> if you've got an yeah. ongoing particle effect like that, it's going to be rough on a computer. So they may have just removed that. I'll have to get with them and, ch and check it out. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited about it. Uh, she's going to be a support and um, she's uh, she's aquatic based as evidenced by you know the kind of gills fins on the side of her head and the the trident that she uses so pretty cool stuff yep, she looks good and we got nothing for phoenix rising this week um kind of looking out there th though there is the um got 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 word of a uh auto chess version of paragon somebody's working on a paragon auto chess um, Creed, you, you took a look at that. Uh, what did you think? What did you think of the progress on that? Uh, I thought it looked pretty cool. Uh, I've been playing a lot of team fight tactics on League. I've been grinding that like every day recently. It's kind of filling my void. So something like that, like did drop. I mean, I don't know how it would play or how, uh, I don't think there's a community for it, but like as an alternate game mode versus like a 3v3 or something, I think that'd mm -hmm. be something cool to implement. To a game. It's nice seeing people using those assets for more than just mm -hmm. a MOBA. Um, we got uh, made the troll faces in my Discord a lot. I keep meaning to talk to him about this, and I just never have the time. But he's he's designing like a um, like a single player adventure style game using the Paragon assets. Like I know from the last I saw, you know, Sarath running through like a castle and stuff. And that looked really cool, kind of a Dark Souls ish type thing but i need to get i need i really need to get with him find out more about that and see see how far along he is on that game but um the team fight tactics and the auto chest i haven't played much of it i've watched windu play quite a bit but i haven't played it myself i need to get in on that if somebody makes a paragon team fight tactics or auto chest i will be on that like <laughs> stink right. on shit i couldn't think couldn't think of anything less <laughs> less, <laughs> less vulgar that's just how my mind works but yeah i'll be all over that shit but um, I'll try and find out a little bit more about that and uh, link that in the uh, video description below so you guys can check that out for yourself. So I think that wraps that up. Let's move on to the poll results for most impactful ultimate. And uh, I've been doing two polls a week. This time we had the uh, the big one I thought I thought was the big one was uh, Muriel, Narbash, Phase, Rampage, and Revenant. Muriel won with 43% of the votes. Narbash had 18, Phase 15, Rampage 12, and Revenant 12. So, uh, yeah, I, I definitely agree with that. I definitely agree that Reversal of Fortune for Muriel was probably probably the most impactful ultimate out of all of those. I think their arguments could be made for Rampage. Um, definitely arguments can be made for Narbash because his ultimate, you know, the big AoE slow and, and knock up. Um, phase kind of a little bit, um, and then Revenant could completely remove somebody from the enemy team for a while, so I, th I thought Revenant's was quite impactful as well, but I do agree that Muriel was probably the most impactful out of those options. What do you guys think? Um, I actually kind of thought Narbash was a little bit more, just because it seemed like that was such a cool thing in, uh, in team fights, however, Muriel was a badass. There's no no denying that. Um, you know, she. I have seen the error of my ways in the beginning. I was not much of a. I, I just never had good experiences with a Muriel on my team. But that's not the hero's fault. It's the player's fault. You know, <laughs> yeah. if you don't have a good player, then you know. But um, yeah, I thought Narbash was such a badass. So I, I uh, I'm not surprised he's. Second, I'm just surprised at the um, the gap space between, yeah, yeah. yeah. What do you think? Who do you, you like? I thought Muriel was like a clear winner here. I mean, Narbash was pretty. It's uh, I look at everything from like higher, like super high gameplay, and everybody can be used. Like, there's advantage to everybody True. for every situation. True, but except for maybe Phase, you know. <laughs> Hyperflux could be pretty pretty good used in the right situation. Yeah, if That's you knew true. how to use it. If you knew how to use it. If you're if you if you're carrying you how to aim, <laughs> it could yeah. be good. Oh yeah. I mean with the attack speed you really don't have to aim, you just kinda spray. <laughs> yeah, just spray and pray. Especially with multi-shot gym. 
Yeah, don't yeah, right? Oh my god. <laughs> oh man. But Muriel for sure, because um, that alt and then the cleanse that goes along with it was definitely most impactful. Oh, I'd forgotten about the fight. cleanse, yeah. But then, was, uh, oh, go ahead. Yeah, I, I liked Revenant as well, too, because, like, he could uh, single somebody out, like, one of their AoE damagers, like, say, take out Gideon out of the fight for your team if he's, like, their only AoE. And especially at the end of the game, since it stunned everybody, that was a big, like, change for a team fight, too. <laughs> So, uh, moving on to the, the the next poll, it was Richter, Sarath, Severog, Shinbi, and Sparrow. Severog won with 36% of the votes. Richter had 28%, which kind of surprised me. Sarath had 11, Shinbi had 10, Sparrow had 14. So, I was a little surprised at the results of this one. Um, Richter, I think, could his, his ultimate could be impactful, and as much as I loved Richter, I really don't think he was the winner here. If I had to vote, I, I don't get a vote in these. Um, I guess it would either be Severog or Sparrow. I think Sparrow's inner fire could be very effective in a team fight, but it kind of had to be comboed with somebody else. Like it had needed to have a Decker Cage or a Crash Bang Boom or mm -hmm. you know a Phase Flux or something like that to really make inner fire rock as hard as it possibly could. So, what'd you guys think of this poll? Um, I know Creed. I know you said you your your vote went to Severog, yeah? It did. Yes. Um. I think a lot of people voted for Severog because it's like it's like the face you see before you die. Like everyone probably voted for him. Like, like damn, that Severog is the reason I died. He's just uh he's just such a good initiator. He just goes in and then he like smacks three people towards your team, and you're just like that Severog killed me or got me killed yeah. or whatever. So I'm pretty sure. Yeah, that's cut. Why. He, yeah, that's right. He could just cut the team in half just like that. Exactly. Good stuff. Yeah, I I can't deny here uh, that Severog is a clear winner. Even though I voted for Sparrow because she's my girl. <laughs> <laughs> I, knew, I knew it. I knew you would. I knew you would. I don't know. I think that's a pretty good choice, Sparrow. <laughs> but that that's going to wrap it up for the poll results for this week. Pretty soon we'll get into the uh, to pitting all these winners against each other and find out whose cuisine reigns supreme at the end. For now, we're going to take a look at the highlight reel. And uh, we've got some pretty funny ones this time. It's uh, kind of... Kind of Murdoch heavy, and then I, I threw a bonus sock app clip in there of him killing Mooney. I, I miss Mooney out of all the out of all the guys you always saw in the community corner. I, I enjoyed Mooney the most, but uh, yeah, let's go ahead and take a look at the highlight reel. Got a clip here from Big Daddy Murdoch, and he is of course playing Big Daddy Murdoch. Got a team fight here in the mid lane on the Legacy map. Still throwing down that shield wall. Murdoch's going to try to maneuver around it, using it to the best of his abilities to block those shots. And he scoots down into the jungle here. I didn't know what the hell he was doing when I first watched this clip. I was like, why is he dropping down into the jungle in the middle of a team fight? Well, you're going to see here in a second. Still lays down the big ultimate, followed by the long dong of the law. Softens him up quite a bit. Gideon, the friendly Gideon, tried to finish it off, but it doesn't quite work out. But here comes Murdoch. Enemy team Gideon gets wasted, standing in place, trying to do his ultimate. Now Decker is taking shots. She realizes she's getting attacked from behind. This was the plan all along. He comes in from behind, cleans up a, for a triple kill, but now he's got Gadget and Kalari, and Kalari's got that red buff. Gadget hits him with the mine and the shower of pain. He knocks her back with the shield. <laughs> Skeet shoots Kalari straight out of the air. Now it's a shootout with Gadget that he may lose, but of course he's not going to lose. This is a highlight reel. He lines up the shots, takes out Gadget, goes very, very low on health. He wants that red buff. He's going to try and sneak around and get this red buff as it's laying on the ground. Takes a couple hits from minions that almost kill him. So uh, great stuff from Big Daddy Murdoch. Michael the God here playing a Master Skinned Grim on the Monolith map, rotating towards the middle lane. You'll see off in the distance that there is a low health Chimera fleeing for his life behind the tower. He Kobe's that displacement blast, gets him low enough to take him down with the get the fuck out. Another Legacy Murdoch clip with that uh, the Halloween Pumpkinhead skin. This is coming to us from Prototype, who hosted the show with us recently. Oh, Rampage is in trouble, but here comes Murdoch taking out Richter with ease. Finishes off the other Murdoch before Murdoch can take out his Rampage. Rampage very low on health. Sticking around. Get away. <laughs> this clip is funny. These guys are so freaking funny. Rampage going to toss that rock. He does miss it. He's going to pay for it with his life here. Maybe. 
Murdoch laying down the shots, gets into tower range, takes some hits from the tower. Rampage gets away with a sliver of health as well as Murdoch. He got out of that tower just in time. That's got to be annoying. We got another Rampage rock. Let's see some Rampage on Rampage action. If that rock hits, it does not. goes just above his head. Now, the enemy team at Rampage is going to kind of fuck with him here a little bit. Jumping around, comes in after the Murdoch. Murdoch's got the red and black buff. He just keeps jumping around, but the laser stops him. Oh, but that get the fuck out targeted him. Very nice body block from the Rampage. That uh, definitely would have killed Murdoch. <laughs> He's going to hide in the shadow well. Thinks that Grim doesn't know where he is. Grim knows exactly where he is. Chucks out a displacement blast trying to take him out. Turns to take out Rampage. He, if he would have focused on one or the other, he might have had a chance, but he had no chance there as uh, Prototype takes out the Grim. Funny clip, funny clip. I told you, dude. He didn't know where I was. Special treat for you Mooney fans out here. This is my boy Sock He sent me quite a few. Clips. Uh, his team just got uh, thrashed by the enemy team, but that's Mooney playing the Gideon. Almost got him with that rock. Sockcap's going to come in after him. He knows he's in trouble. He tries to get away. Oh Sock God. pulls him onto the tower, <laughs> silences him, and takes him out. That's a that's a oh special God. Mooney death clip for you. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed the highlight reel. Uh, before we get to the topic for discussion, we are once again going to play the name game with Dara. That's Mandy's sister. She didn't play Paragon, and she has no idea about any of the heroes except for what she's seen on For the Minions. So uh, what we do is we get three heroes, and I uh, put three names and three ability names to see if she can match up the names and the abilities with the hero portrait, and it's always a lot of fun. I actually put, ended up making a mistake and putting two correct answers for her more guess this time but uh anyway let's check it out because it is quite hilarious all right guys we're going to start up the name game once again with dara we got three heroes we got three names we got three abilities we actually we got four names and four abilities because i made up two let's see if we can fool dara and if you don't know dara never played paragon and knows nothing about the heroes which is why this is so much fun so dara Let's take it away and see see how well you do. You're, you you went fifty percent on the last two. Let's see how well you do this time. Okay, welcome to the third installment of a literacy time with Dara. But I think I got this one. <laughs> okay, I know. Oops, I don't think where I'm supposed to move it. Okay, I know this is the Fae. Uh, because they talk about her a lot. Um, I. I feel like, <clears throat> I don't know if that's Sasha or Sashay. I feel like the Fae has a power to Sashay away, okay? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> she does, in that pose, she does look like she, she's uh, Sashaying a bit. Yes, um, but I'm going to say she's got wings. Oh, wait, Flytrap, come on. about this Kalari person a lot, but I don't think that's Kalari. I think Mor Morgish is Ramhead's name. Uh, <laughs> Ramhead. Yeah. Another spirit animal of mine. But, okay. Um, Shadow Walker. I feel like this guy is Oh my god, Mark. I just saw Mark. <laughs> That's so fucking hilarious. Mark. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why Mark is so funny. It just is, Mark. <laughs> Alright, um. Watch it be a real thing. They're like, you don't know. Um, let's see. Oh, gosh. Oh, crap. Some of these things must 
Slither? I don't know. Maybe Shadow Walker, maybe he slithers away. I don't know. This one's so hard. It's so hard for me not to giggle <laughs> while you're playing you're this. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to give anything away. Yeah, one more. You just got to get that ability. Because there's somebody in the comments who always says Polari, so Polari's a person. But Morgish can't be a... I also didn't think back that. Or Knock Knock. I didn't know Knock Knock was a real thing. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe Mark's a real thing. Maybe she marks you with her little sword. I'm confused. You got me on this one. I'm done. Oh my god. Is that your final answer? Yeah. <laughs> there right, you went fifty percent again. <laughs> that mark is correct. Moragesh is correct, and Moragesh has an ability called Mark, where she marks her target. Oh my god! <laughs> you also got the Fey correct, and you are right. You were saying uh, earlier that one of these looked like one of my favorites. The Fey was my second favorite, right behind Richter. But uh, she does not swarm. Swarm is not real. She has a fly trap, so you should have went with your gut on that one. You almost had it. And this guy is actually a girl. Can't really tell. But that is Kalari that you hear so much about. No! Yep. And she no. does not slither. She does, however, shadow walk. No! So there you go. You 50% again. You, you, you keep hitting it. You keep surprising me. What really got me there was the mark. For Moragesh, I can't believe you got that. That was so good. That's the whole reason I picked these three, because I was like, Mark, that sounds like a name. That's going to confuse her. <laughs> I totally thought, like, he thinks I'm stupid enough to put Mark in. <laughs> <laughs> and it was real. So, oh well God. done once again, Dara. We haven't been able to stump you. I, I consider... Somebody that has never played Paragon, I, I consider 50% to be success. That's an A in my book, and uh, you, you've aced the last three of them. We'll have to see if we can get you next time. <laughs> Hell yeah, I'm ready for round four of illiteracy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, actually, I guess I had more than I thought as far as the fake ones. Great job, Dara, and thanks once again for coming out and doing this. Everybody enjoys watching you struggle through these names. <laughs> Yay, I enjoy the struggle. <laughs> You know what? I just thought of Swarm actually is correct. All right, guys, I hope you had fun watching Dara play the name game. I know it's certainly a lot of fun for us, and it has become a fan favorite for, on For the Minions. Um, tech time, by the way, is not going away. I just haven't had... I've, I've been busy as a bed bug in a whorehouse. I haven't been able to do hardly anything. So let's move on to the topic for discussion for this week is... Uh, since we got Creed here, um, what alpha testers need to look for when bug testing? So, you're the expert on breaking games. How do we need to go in there and try and break some shit whenever we play the alpha there, Creed? Um, so, how I would approach it, if it's another map test, you guys did great on the last one. Um, just run around, see if anything's broken, like ledges and stuff, see if you can uh, get stuck on that. But once we release a uh, full game, Kind of just uh, play it as normal, maybe go off if you want, but like, play it as normal, make sure everything plays smoothly, and uh, if anything breaks on the way, just kind of record it like a normal bug, I would say. Uh, most people, most bugs you find actually just come from just playing the game, so when the, the alpha releases, it's probably going to be bugs with like, scaling issues with cards and stuff like that, and you're like, one-shotting people with Murdoch Alt or some, something like that, just insane scaling. So it's a lot of looking for little, I mean, I guess that wouldn't be little, that'd be pretty, pretty game breaking, <laughs> but just kind of play the game like normal. And then as you find bugs that like hinder and take away from the normal gameplay or how it should feel, just send that in and be like, this wall caught me and got me killed by their whole team and I was when the team lost the game. Like that stuff would make me upset. So <laughs> I, I don't want that in the game. So if that ruins your gaming experience, just make sure you send that in and be like, this needs to be fixed, or I'm going to die a lot more. <laughs> Made to be. And I'm so going to break, my, break my hand sure a lot more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! 
<laughs> so is there <laughs> anything in particular we should be like uh, including in the reports whenever we are, whenever people do like test for the bugs and the alpha and all that? Um, just uh, kind of have like severe bugs. You want kind of report those like right away, and a severe bug would be like game crashes, uh, stuff along the lines like falling to the map. All that stuff would be a severe game-breaking bug. Um, smaller bugs would just be like collisions, like I said. That's like that's more a moderate bug. And then just like tiny bugs is just like animation issues, like abilities not playing out the way they should be. It's a smaller bug. And then that's kind of how we prioritize things. So we always take like if somebody's game crashes, and that obviously takes away from the fun. So that's a bigger priority for us to take. So. Yeah. Like, if Muriel isn't extending her arm all the way out, that's probably yeah, not high like, on the list of things that you I mean, want. Like, but if she ults off the map, then yeah. <laughs> well, that's really, um, that's interesting. Um, good, good information that you gave us, because that kind of made me think, me and Goose kind of made the dream team of game testing then, because... <laughs> In the uh, in the alpha for predecessor, you just ran off like a madman and did what the fuck ever you wanted to do. And I was like, no, I'm gonna stay. I'm gonna play my role. I'm gonna play the game the way it's supposed to be played and see what bugs I find. So we were like the dream team. Go yeah. us. <laughs> I was I was really hoping I got to play that because I just I was missing it for so long. But sadly, yeah. I didn't get the key. And just uh, I, I just saw it. And I was like, that looks like a lot of fun. Everyone's enjoying it. I mean, the the delay is just like everyone was just like lagging. All it was to me, I was just like, it can be worked around. Just yeah, availabilities and that fixes it. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, gadget was very powerful because of, she was so <laughs> ability driven, <laughs> and there was some scaling issues with her too. Like her ultimate was ridiculous, but. <laughs> I can't aim for very well with this leg, so let me just throw this all down. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think I did exactly that, too. <laughs> it probably missed the ultimate. <laughs> Two seconds later, it throws down behind you, just like... <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. It wasn't, it wasn't that bad. <laughs> it's going to be interesting to see what kind of bugs Ethereal has with their map. Because, oh. like, you're supposed to fall through in some spots, but... Mm -hmm. Like, I can imagine you could probably fall through and end up completely off the map. And oh, that's going to be a nightmare for them, I think. Into the abyss somewhere. Into, yeah. I yeah, mean, I'm they've got a great team over like, there. So hopefully they can, they, 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 they got a handle on it, I would think. Yeah, I'm excited for them. Like, I want to just see how that plays. Like, everything like stacked on top of each other. I feel like it's going to be a different gameplay and it's going to be really cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's so, definitely something exciting to look forward to. Did you find any bugs in Paragon itself? Um, nothing like too bad. I get stuck some places like Aurora, and, yeah, uh, Solari. So obviously, I would use those to be like, "Oh, you can't can't touch me here, Rampage." So, <laughs> just like jump up on a ledge and back and be like, "My bad, dude." Yeah. <laughs> just, just sit, sit there and swing at the wall until you almost hit me. <laughs> Oh, that would so, make me so mad. That would make me so mad. Stuff like that. It was just a lot of fun. I always used, uh, when they had that old four prime pit, I always, like, I mastered, like, being able to jump through and, like, back, I don't know, they kind of had that wall and then, like, it went down. I'd always be able to, like, jump from up here, like, onto that wall. Yeah. I don't know how I mastered <laughs> it. I was just, like, that's, like, an impossible jump, but, like, I'd just juke everybody out that way. Just born to be a game breaker. <laughs> One of the bugs that used to piss me off, and it took them forever to fix it, and I don't know if they ever completely fixed it, was the steps in, it was mid lane and, and safe lane both. Every once in a while, especially if you were on Faye, like somebody who floated a little bit, you would just pop way up in the air. Hey, what's up, dude, in the background? <laughs> <laughs> you would just pop Sorry. like way up in the air, like, and just get crushed. <laughs> Oh, that pissed yeah. me off so much. I, I mean, that was a known bug. Everybody knew about the fucking steps bug, but then Epic right, never just, like, fixed it. It'd send you flying up like Valakal, and you'd just be like, oh, great. I'm stunned by yeah. my own tower. <laughs> <laughs> that was always funny, too. I saw quite a few of that where Bellica would hit somebody with seismic assault, and they would just right. <laughs> go popping like, <laughs> like go, 200 go feet up in the like, air. Uh, yeah. I'm dead. <laughs> 
her son, I thought her son was so fun. Like, I don't know, I think it was kind of a little broken. Like, she'd stun. The stun wouldn't start until you landed. So if you flew, like, way up in the air, it's like a six-second stun. You're just like, you know, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, guys, I have to see if I'm done. I'm going to grab lunch. I'll be right back. <laughs> yeah, right. This game afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, I think that's it for the top four discussion, unless you guys had anything else you wanted to say. I'm good. You good? I'm all good. I said everything. All right, let's uh, let's move on to plugs. Uh, Creed, you got like a you got a Twitch, YouTube channel, anything like that you want to plug? Um, I'll plug my Twitch. I stream uh, some Team Fight Tactics on the weekend when I'm free. So right on. It's a uh, AK Creed, and I believe it's just a double underscore afterwards. All right, yeah, just send that to me, and I'll link it in the uh, video description below, so you guys can check that out if you want to. Uh, Mandy? I got nothing. I don't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> check out Mandy's Discord. She's got quite the thriving, <laughs> popular Discord. You can uh, you can see me making up rhymes about her mom in there. It's a good time. <laughs> it is it's a good, good time. time. <laughs> i got to be extra nice to you, because I've been burning you left and right in your own Discord. <laughs> That's, like, messed up. <laughs> so messed up. I have no comment. <laughs> And I got nothing to plug, so uh, uh, that's going to be it. That's going to wrap it up for For the Minions, episode number 32. Thanks for joining us. I hope you guys had fun. I hope you guys, uh, the name game I thought was especially funny this time with that whole Mark thing. But <laughs> anyway, <laughs> that's going to be all for this week. Uh, you guys have a good one. This is the For the Minions team signing off. Goodbye. Mangoo!